Today we are going to be modeling my most recent video, the workbench that I am currently sitting at. Before you do anything, you want to make sure you have all of your tools available. So you're going to go to View, Tool Palettes, and click Large Tool Set. This way you've got everything you'll need to work with. So I'm going to start with my tabletop, and I'm going to use the rectangle tool to draw that out. I know that I want it to be 6 feet long, which is 72 inches and 30 inches wide. And next I'm going to use the Orbit tool to just change the orientation I'm looking at things and grab the Push-Pull tool. I'm making the top out of 2x4s on end. 2x4s are 3.5 inches wide, but I'm also going to be planing and sanding them down. So, for the sake of this model, I'm going to be making it 3 inches tall. And now that we have the tabletop, we need to make this a component. Right now, it's editable. If I clicked on this face, it selects that face. If I select the top, it selects that. But what I want is to be able to select the entire thing as a group. So I'm going to triple click it, right click, and click Make Component. Now you can name this if you want, you can, don't have to, it just keeps things organized. I'm going to call it top. Then I'm going to orbit around just a little bit more so I can see this blue axis, and I'm going to grab the Move tool. Here in the bottom corner, you can see where I have these purple dots. That's signifying a corner or some sort of mark that you've made. And I'm going to move up the blue axis 30 inches, and I'm just going to type that in. So now we have our tabletop at the final height that it's going to be. And so next, we're going to make the legs. And the legs are made out of 2x4s that are planed down to 3.5 inches by an inch and a quarter, instead of an inch and a half, which is standard. So once again, I'm going to orbit around to where now I'm looking at the bottom of the tabletop. And I want to draw some reference lines to put these legs in the right spot. So I'm going to grab my tape measure, and I'm just going to start on one edge and draw a line 6 inches in. That's how far I want my legs to be from the edge. Then from the other edge, I'm going to draw a line and make that 3 inches. And that's how far I want the legs on this end. You remember those purple dots that let me grab a corner? Well, using the tape measure does the same thing. It doesn't make lines. Instead, it makes reference points so that you can put things on an axis. So once again, I'm going to use the rectangle tool to draw a shape that is 3 and a half inches wide and an inch and a quarter long. We're going to get the push-pull tool, and we're going to bring this down 30 inches so that it is even with the ground. And if I orbit, you can kind of see what we've got so far. I'm going to triple click it and make this a component. And I'm just going to call it leg piece one. So if you've seen my original workbench video, which I highly suggest, that way you can understand how the workbench is built before we're modeling it in SketchUp, you know that the legs are two 2x4s two laminated. So what I'm going to do really quick is just orbit around so that I can see the inside face of the leg, which is going to have all of the dados cut out of it. And I know that the bottom of my first stretcher is going to be 5 inches off the ground. So I'm just going to make a mark at 5 inches. Then I'm going to make one more mark 3.5 inches up from that, because I know that 2x4s are 3.5 inches wide. Instead of knowing the distance from this to my next dado, instead I'm going to measure from the top of my leg and make a mark 3.5 inches down. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and come down to these intersection points and draw out those shapes. I'm just going to go ahead and make them both while I'm at it. Then we can use the push-pull tool one more time and come out 1.25 inches on each of them. Now before we do anything else, we want to make sure we make these components. So we're going to triple click them, right click them, and then click Make Component. I'm going to say Leg Piece 2, and then triple click, Make Component, Leg Piece 3. So if we orbit around, now we can see that we've got a leg with dados in it, and that's pretty exciting. So if you know the workbench already, you know that we've got stretchers going lengthwise with the base, along with dados going widthwise. So we need to make those as well. And before we can draw out all those lines, we need to explode leg piece one. And essentially what that does is make it editable. Instead of being one piece when you click on it, now, if you click on a face, it edits that face. The bottom stretchers are offset while the apron around top is all on the same plane. So I'm going to make that one first. I'm going to use my line tool and I'm going to reference this purple dot because we know that that is an intersection. And I'm going to draw that line all the way around the piece. And now you see when we click Select, this face is independent from this face and this one from that. So we're going to grab our Push-Pull tool one more time and we're going to push this face in 1.25 inches. As you can see, we've got a double lap joint here, which is pretty exciting. This line I made by accident. 
I'm just going to click it and then delete, and we're all good. What's different about these offset stretchers is that it goes through both leg piece one and leg piece two. So I'm going to go ahead and select leg piece two and explode that so that I can edit it as well. Then I'm going to grab my tape measure tool and come up 3.5 inches from that intersection point because, once again, that is the width of a 2x4. I hope you guys understand that by now. I'm going to quit saying it. Then I'm going to select both leg pieces and draw lines all the way around it one more time. And I'm going to draw my line around the bottom piece as well. So now that we've got all of our pieces segmented, I'm going to grab my push-pull tool one more time and put this in 1.25 inches and this one 1.25 inches. And those are our legs. Check it out. And now that we have one leg totally done, we're going to use it to make the other three. So we're just going to use our select tool. And here's a cool tip. If you use the select tool and you're highlighting things from left to right, it will only select the things that you have completely in your window. But if you select from right to left, it'll select anything that it's touching. So that's a convenient little tip. And I'm just going to click copy and paste, command C and command V. It's just a really fast shortcut. And so now I'm going to orbit around. We're going to right click it and we're going to say flip along green direction. And now you can see that our stretchers are going to line up together. And so now I'm going to orbit around so I can see my reference lines, get my move tool, and get it snapped on that line. And you can see now, once we get our stretchers in, they're going to line up perfect. And now before I go duplicating this set of legs, I want to clean up all of my extra lines. So I'm going to delete all these things that we don't have to have in place. So one more time, I am going to select my legs, right click it, and say make component. And I'm going to call this leg group one. And now I know that this is one group of two. Copy and paste. This time, I have both sets of legs. Now, of course, I'm going to have to rotate these again. So I'm going to select tool and say flip along red direction. And then I'm going to move this into place. I'm not sure that that snapped really well. I'm going to try one more time just to make sure. There we go. So now our legs are totally complete, and I want to make these individual components. So I'm just going to say, make component leg one complete. Man, I can't type today. Leg two complete, and so on. Now our stretchers are two by fours as well, and this is going to be really simple to make. First thing I'm going to do is orbit around until I can find this cutout, this lap joint. And I'm going to use my rectangle tool and find that intersection and draw that out. Next, I'm going to orbit back around one more time and use the push-pull tool to bring this out. And simple math that I've done already tells me that that piece needs to be 24 inches. So I'm going to triple click it, make that component, and call it 24 inch stretcher. And what's awesome is I can copy and paste this piece, orbit around, and just go ahead and put it in place. Always using those purple dots to reference. Then I can do the same thing. Then I can do the same thing with these guys. I'm going to make another rectangle, make sure and reference that corner. And orbit around. Then use that push-pull tool until it's there. And make that a component. I'm going to call that long stretcher. One more time. Command C, Command V, and there we go. We've got our whole bottom done. This is going by pretty quick, right? It's not that tough. So our top is pretty interesting because the 24-inch stretchers are the same, but the long stretchers are not the same length. So what I'm going to do really fast is just select this 24-inch stretcher, copy and paste it, and put it in place. Now we have our reference. Then I'm going to orbit around and find where I can make another rectangle. 
So I'm just going to reference these purple lines like always. Then use the push-pull tool to bring it out. Now I'm not going to bring it out all the way because I want to go ahead, select my 24-inch stretcher one more time, Command-C, Command-V. Whoa, I zoomed out a little far there. And put it in place. There we go. Make sure that that purple dot is referencing right, and it is. So then I can orbit around, find the right camera angle. Like I said, if you hold down Shift with the Orbit tool, you are now panning. Use that push-pull tool, select the face, and there we go. Make sure you triple-click it, make that a component. I'm going to call that short, long stretcher, which is a little bit of a double negative, I think. So then, like before, Command-C, Command-V, copy, paste. I'm going to leave it there, orbit around, find the right camera angle. This is what's a little tricky sometimes, it's just finding the right angle to work with. Then I'm going to move, I'm going to reference this corner. So now we know we have it on the right plane, I can zoom in and get it locked in in place. There we go. And our base is complete. Now you could totally leave the top alone just like this, but I want to go ahead and show you how to make the laminated top. We planed the 2x4s to an inch and a quarter for the base, but I wanted to make my money go as far as it could for the top, and I didn't plane those at all. So I'm going to start by finding my green axis. I want a good reference plane, and I'm going to make a rectangle that is an inch and a half by three and a half inches, the same as a 2x4. Then I'm going to extrude that six feet. One more time, I'm going to make that component, triple click, right click, and I'm going to call that 2 by 4 for top. At this point, you really don't need to name anything. Then, then I'm going to select it, even though it already is, copy and paste. I'm going to find this corner, that purple dot, and I'm going to line it up with that purple dot. Next, I'm going to go ahead and just select both of these, copy and paste one more time. Find that purple dot. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I've got a lot of 2x4s. I'm not going to worry about exactly how many I need until I just get a bunch of them down there. So now that we've got plenty of 2x4s in there, I'm going to grab my tape measure tool, find that purple dot, and come out 30 inches, which is 2.5 feet. And what's really awesome math-wise is that on this intersection is 30 inches. So I'm not going to have to cut one of my 2x4s in half or anything like that. So now that I know how many 2x4s to delete, I'm going to get my select tool one more time, grab those four, delete them, and now I can select all my 2x4s, right-click them, make component, and call that new top. I'm going to orbit around, hold shift so that you're panning, Get my select tool, delete the old top, orbit around one more time so that I see where my axis is intersect, because remember that was our first reference point. We're going to grab the move tool, find this purple dot here. We've got it in the corner, but we don't have it high enough. So I'm going to do that one more time and just slide up the blue axis until we are 30 inches high. And that's it. Check it out. One thing that I like to do is just clean up all of these lines that we've made with the tape measure. So I'm just going to select everything, explode it, because over time I've gotten these reference lines into components with other pieces. I wasn't incredibly careful with that. So then I'm just going to select all of these reference lines, delete them, get them out of here. So the beauty of SketchUp is now, not only do you have an idea of what it's going to look like, what the proportions are, whether it looks funky or not, you can figure out the lengths for all of your pieces. So you remember on the legs, we knew that we wanted the stretcher on the bottom to be five inches from the ground, but we didn't necessarily know the distance between this stretcher and this stretcher, or rather, this stretcher to that stretcher. So what we can do is just use our tape measure tool, find that purple dot, green dot actually, 
And now that we know that it's approximately a foot and a half, so when I cut that piece, I know that I have a five inch piece and then a foot and a half piece out of two by fours. There's also extensions for making cut lists and all of that. We'll go over that in a future video. I think this is a great place to start for now. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those in the comments. I'm gonna do my best to answer as many as I can. And if you wanna hit me up on Instagram with a DM, that's always a quick way to get in touch with me. Huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description as well. Without you guys, there would be no second channel, which means there would be no SketchUp videos. If you are interested in contributing to my Patreon, I really appreciate it. We've got some cool rewards. We've got stickers, patches, shirts, Google Hangouts, all kinds of stuff. So make sure and check out that link. I appreciate it. If you're not watching my main channel, make sure you do that. I have a video actually building this workbench, not just modeling it. The link will be in one of these corners. I can never remember which one it is. And lastly, if you wanna watch a slightly more complicated SketchUp video, I will link that right here. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe to this channel. We're not only doing SketchUp videos. The first series of videos is gonna be on SketchUp, but after that, I've got a lot more planned, so be sure and stay tuned. Thanks everybody, and we'll see you next time on Mike from Modern Builds. That's me. Oh. Thanks to Drake's Brewing for the free beer. Y'all are awesome. Keep sending it.